Why peace? The world will tell you this is what the world needs, this is what the world needs, this is what the world needs. But seven billion people on the face of this earth are crying out for one thing and one thing alone, and that is peace. And peace is not the absence of war. I travel not because I like to travel. I travel so I can say this. What you're looking for is inside of you. And you should be in peace. Tim Rawat has been traveling for 40 years, inspiring people around the world to find peace within. Buenos dias. Shalom. Buongiorno. Guten tag. Bonsoir, Montreal. I go and I talk to people. And I present them with the possibility of themselves Discover the peace that lies within you. Well, we are here this evening, and the subject that I want to talk about is really very simple. I know there's a lot of people here and when it comes to the subject of peace or any one of these things, people have a tendency to get very uptight. I don't know why. Because by its nature, peace is something that brings a lot of joy. It's beautiful. And it is something that we need. It's not a concept, it's not an idea, it's not a luxury. It's a necessity. The desire for peace does not come from thoughts. The desire for peace does not come from books. The desire for peace comes from every single human being. Because the way I look at it, it's like a garden. And first of all, what makes a garden a garden? That is the content of what exists there. Nobody goes to the desert and says, wow, look at that beautiful garden. Just I haven't heard that. Because things do grow, but there's like one over there, and one over there, and most of it is filled with sand. But when we go to see a garden, we expect to find flowers. Something beautiful. And so I was thinking about flowers. And what is this fascination and this love that we have with flowers? What, what, is, what, is, what is this thing? The husband takes off wife. Wife gets upset. Husband sends flowers. Sorry. Somebody gets sick, we want them to get better, we send them flowers. And if our wish didn't come true and they died, <laughs> we send them flowers. If somebody's getting married, we send them flowers. If we're thinking of somebody, we send them flowers. In many, 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 many civilizations, cultures, when they go in front of God to make an offering, they think the most appropriate thing to bring is flowers. We like to look at flowers. We like to have flowers at our home. People sell flowers on the roadside, your last minute shopping to appease your better half. But what is a flower? What is it? A seed is sown, it sprouts, it becomes a flower. And this bloom is the word, is it not? Bloom. When it comes to its full 
potential, when it comes to its full beauty, bloom. And that's what it's about. It's not about the seed stage, and it's not about what's going to happen later. But it's that bloom, bloom that is so attractive. So, since this is not a botany class, why am I telling you about flowers? In my opinion, we too, are flowers. And we need to bloom. In this garden that we exist in, the flowers have come up with excuses of why we shouldn't bloom. Ah, what's the point? We're all going to die one day, right? So what is this blooming business? Just bide your time, stay intact, forget about the blooming business, forget about feeding anybody, forget about everything, forget about the sun, that's what's going to destroy you. Just bide the time and survive. So, when I go around the world and I talk about peace, I really feel I am this person who's going around to the flowers and saying, forget about your excuses, bloom. Will you please bloom? Just bloom. Because that's when you are the most beautiful. So am I qualified to tell you about you? I don't know. But I'll try. Because I am no different than you. And if I can express my aspiration Perhaps you too have the same aspiration in you. And that aspiration is the aspiration to be fulfilled. To be in peace to have the ultimate expression of life called joy. Joy. You know sadness. You do. And you hate it so much. You hate it so much. You will do any and everything possible to avoid it. In fact, Now, bear with me. In fact, I think your definition of success, success really means to be able to successfully avoid sadness. Success. For us becomes to successfully avoid our troubles, our pains. Because when that pain comes, nothing makes us more miserable. But here's the gotcha. Here's the gotcha. The gotcha is that even if you successfully avoided the pain, that does not necessarily mean you have the joy. Ouch. You cannot, in a dark room, 
Take a bucket and say, I know how to get light in here. All I'll do is fill this bucket with the darkness and throw it out the window. And I'll keep doing that till there is light. You can't do that. Light is a presence. Darkness is an absence. If you have secured your place in this world where you will not be bothered by problems, that doesn't mean that joy will automatically say, oh yeah, there's the trouble-free zone, here I go. <laughs> no, it won't. So, one formula that the world applies is Build your life in such a way, have it in such a way where you are assured no problems. Whilst there have been those in this world who have said, assure that there is joy in your life. And I think you are so much like me because you too want the real joy in your life. Because inside of you, of course there is questions, but inside of you there is answers too. Inside of you, there is the possibility of feeling pain, but do you know that there is a limitless limitless possibility of feeling happiness, joy. You have no limit for joy. Your tolerance for pain is very small. Your tolerance for joy is off the scale. When you're having a good time, nobody says, stop this. <laughs> and when you're in pain, God, here I come. Help me out. This is who we are. This is who we are. Good, bad, right, wrong is not the issue. You can be successful in your business and not be successful in your life. And what I'm saying is that if you truly, truly want the ultimate success, it has to include both. It has to include both. It's like this. Is there anything wrong with the rain? Nothing. Rain is good, but not when it's raining inside your house. So far as outside is great, inside, no good. Where does this happen? Where, who is happy? Somebody out there, oh yeah, that person is happy. That person is in peace. What about you? Do you not have the thirst to be fulfilled? Has nothing inside of you ever stirred and say, wow, I want to be fulfilled too? You see, what I talk about, you already know. And the reason why you already know what I am talking about is because that is your very nature, flower. You have a relationship, a long relationship with being content. How many books are there in this world today? Here we have internet. So much information. Can you imagine somewhere long, long time ago, some caveman stood on a hill, looked up, saw all the stars, and said, especially after a good dinner, 
Why am I here? What is the purpose of my life? And do you know that people still ask the same question? And people have tried to address it in books. But no, people still ask the same question. Everyone asks the same question. And in my opinion, it's only a matter of those who have and those who haven't yet. Because sooner or later, you will ask that question. Why am I here? What is the purpose of my life? We've been placed on the most magnificent place you can imagine. This earth is pretty special. How special? There isn't one like this around for billions of light years. That's a big area. And what are we doing? Busy destroying it. Why? Because, well, heaven isn't here, is it? We have to die for it. And that's the biggest drawback of heaven. You have to die. Yeah, heaven sounds really wonderful. Almost. Almost. But have you looked around? You are in heaven, more magnificent than any that could have been described. More magnificent. Every single day is different. Every cloud has a different shape. Every snowflake that falls is unique. And every angel on this heaven. Yes, there are angels here. There are. Six billion of them. Lots of angels. They're here. They just don't know it. Just don't know it. You are the angel that will set, that can set your self free. And fly, and be, and exist. You are the one. You're waiting one for to come from the sky. That was pretty miraculous how you came. Nothing short of spectacular. I mean, from nothing, all of a sudden, in your mommy's tummy, there you went. Then out you came. Then you took your breath. And your whole world started to change. Begins with the first breath. You know that? You come out, you're blue. <laughs> Takes the first breath. You take that breath, and everything starts to change, and the chemical signals are sent to your mommy through the placenta. Go, no more blood, I am on my own. I'm here. The grand entrance. Then all your life, this beautiful, beautiful rhythm of this breath coming in, out, in, out, in, out. And you know how it ends? The symphony ends with the last breath, out, not in, out. And that's it. And in this period, from that first breath to the last breath, what was it all about? What was this life? It was the possibility to be content. It was the possibility to be fulfilled. It 
possibility. This is existence. Existence in heaven, here on earth. Listen, listen to that rhythm that is inside of you. Do you not understand that something pushes you every day to be better and better and better? That something pushes you every day to be lighter and lighter and lighter? Something pushes you every day to be clearer and clearer and clearer? Something pushes you every day to be in that heaven? And has it not since you were a little child? Because that breath that comes in and out of